looking sleepy. Good morning, my beautiful people. So, crappy thing just happened. I was going to start today's vlog because I'm doing a little bits with the episode, like what you guys saw in the previous day, like the other vlog where I hauled the gochujang, the Korean red pepper paste. So I was going to film that for you guys today, but I had to clear my memory card. And as you may think where this is going, I accidentally formatted it without... Um, transferring my footage from the other day. So you guys missed a day of me going to Melbourne Central where I shopped for 90s style outfit, but it kind of was a fail of a vlog anyway because I didn't really have any good luck. But you guys missed the outfit shot because I got a clip of my outfit and it was, it was kind of cute. It was really like, I don't know, old school themed and I went to the top shop and got some clothes that were as close to 90s style as I could possibly find. Um, so I'm sorry you guys. I'm sorry I messed up. I've just been so out of it today in the past few days I've just been a complete blur, but anyway for my makeup today. I literally just I'm so lazy I just put on falsies did my eyebrows and on my lips today I have Colourpop's ultra matte lip in shimmy, which is one I never really wear but I'm liking how it looks today Like I'm, I'm digging it. I'm digging it and sorry bedhead. This is happening today. You guys it's dinner time I'm gonna make this food for you guys with my bed head and my, my turtleneck and uh, that's what we are going to do today. I am hungry. Are you guys hungry? Let's make some fusion style Korean salmon. All right, you guys. So this recipe is gonna be really, really simple. I'm not gonna do an entire like, wow, I'm having a hard time talking lately. Something's wrong with me. But like, oh, I've noticed in all my videos, I just can't talk. What I'm trying to say is I'm gonna keep this recipe really simple and it's just gonna be focusing on the salmon dish, but I do recommend that you make white rice or any rice of your choice to go along with it, plus maybe some roasted vegetables of your choice or a salad of your choice, just because this in itself obviously is not a complete meal and I'm kind of forewarning you. But anyway, the focus of this recipe is going to be the salmon that I was talking about in a previous vlog. So here I have a few salmon fillets ready to go. They're fresh, not frozen, which makes this recipe a little more ideal, but we're gonna set that aside for now and focus on the flavoring of this recipe. And it's one that I was doing a lot back home before I moved to Japan. I was making it for my family. And the main flavor aspect of this recipe is gochujang. And gochujang is Korean red pepper paste. And it's kind of unique to Korea. And it basically is the entire pepper turned into a paste. So it surprisingly is not as spicy as you may think it is, which I was surprised about when I moved to Korea. And I was like really intimidated by the spices of gochujang. But then I just found out it's not actually like that spicy. But if you're new to spice and you don't normally eat spicy food, you probably will find this quite spicy. So um, definitely go lightly with it. Ooh, I'm so excited. Oh my God, yes. And this is what gochujang looks like. So it's a very thick, very dense. So not only does this give a unique flavor to your food, but it also works a little bit as a thickening agent as well, just because it's a very densely packed like paste. So what we're gonna do today is make the sauce that I kind of <laughs> enjoy eating. And it actually is really, really simple. And I actually like to change it up from time to time. So the flavors incorporated into my paste and the mixture kind of change slightly. But I'm gonna make the basic one for you today. So you wanna take about two heaping tablespoons of gochujang. And put it into a mixing cup or mixing dish, mixing bowl. I'm just using a tumbler glass it's the smallest I have. Just two big spoonfuls of that, close it up. So now that that is ready in, in our cup, we're gonna add a little bit of our other flavors. So here I'm gonna be using tamari, or you can use any regular style soy sauce, it's up to you. This one, I'm only using it because it's gluten-free and um, I have no idea why I'm using it. It was in my cupboard, I grabbed it, Hey, eh? This is little bits with me. Using my already existing dirty tablespoon. I'm just gonna add a splash of soy sauce, not really measuring it out. I'm gonna say that's like half a tablespoon. Maybe I'll add a little bit more, you know? Yeah. Not only is that gonna add a little bit of a salty flavor, but it's also gonna add a little bit of that hint of soy sauce flavor, which kind of gives another unique Asian twist to it. But then I'm also gonna be taking brown sugar and this is gonna add a nice sweetness factor to it. And I'm, uh, I'm like the worst at cooking shows. I'm always just freehand styling it. So I'm gonna say I'm adding about one tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half of brown sugar. 
maybe more. I don't know, add as much as you want. I actually, oops, I spilled some. In Canada, I was switching it up, so sometimes I would use more honey, sometimes I was even using maple syrup. I wanted to use maple syrup today, but I actually just ran out, unfortunately. So then taking my fork, I'm just gonna scrape the excess off the spoon, because that gochujang is very sticky. And then just mixing it all together. I actually kind of feel like I want to add more sugar. I kind of want this one to be a little more sweeter today. It's kind of in the mood. So let's just add another like half tablespoon or like a teaspoon of sugar. No, no. Okay, no, we're going for another tablespoon. Yep. Not the healthiest paste, but you know, it's delicious, fabulous. All right, change of scenes. Now I'm gonna add some garlic and this is actually, um, one of you guys told me last time on my Little Bits Would Be episode to put a tablecloth under my cutting board so it wouldn't slip, so I'm gonna do that today. Works pretty well. I'm just cutting up this massive clove of garlic just to get a different type of flavor. This actually is, the entire recipe is very Korean style. Like the only thing that's different is nothing to be honest like I don't know like I don't know if this is actually Korean like a legit Korean dish but all the flavors are flavors that are used in Korea and I actually would prefer to add a few drops or like or like half a teaspoon of sesame oil in there so if you do have sesame oil at home add that in there because it, it gives it a true Korean flavor but I don't have any sesame oil for some reason I keep forgetting to buy it kind of roughly chopping it now. Then I'm gonna take about half of the amount of garlic I chopped up just because that is like a lot of garlic. I don't want that much. So just taking like half of it and I'm just gonna plop that right into my mixture. And then now that that's all added in there, once again, just stirring it up. And that's like it. That's it for my seasoning. And then like I said, this is one that you can totally change up depending on what ingredients you may have at home. So like I said, honey works amazing. Um, maple syrup creates a totally unique and delicious flavor. Then also adding that sesame oil makes a huge impact on the flavor as well and really makes it quite delicious. And then just giving you guys a close up view of what the mixture currently looks like. So as you can see, it's quite thick and chunky because it's mostly just that hot pepper paste with sugar added into it and a little bit of soy sauce, which gives it a runnier flavor and then that garlic chunks. So now I'm just going to lay out a few sheets of tin foil. One, two. And I'm doing this because I still, for some reason, do not own proper baking, <laughs> baking sheets. I know, you guys, I know. So next I'm just gonna take a little bit of olive oil and just plop that right onto my DIY baking sheet just so that the salmon doesn't stick too much, but knowing my luck, it probably will. <laughs> I have the worst luck with this kind of stuff. And I guess, I guess I'm gonna use my hands and <laughs> spread that around. Yeah, this is little bits with me. <laughs> right, then I'm just gonna take that same dirty hand and add my salmon into that tray. Just right in the middle. I'm gonna separate them a little bit too, just because I want that, I want my paste to get all over the salmon. All right, so now I'm just gonna take my paste and I'm just going to plop it right onto everything. And I'm making sure not to touch the fork that I'm scooping it onto, like my mixing fork onto the actual salmon because I don't wanna cross contaminate my fork into the paste that I just worked so hard to make. And then I'm just gonna go ahead with the original spoon that I used because I'm not planning on using that again. I'm just gonna spread it over salmon. I want to try to keep most of this flavor on the top portion of the salmon, but because there is a lot of sugar in this, it also will melt and spread on its own. So you don't have to be too precise. I remember when I made this for my family the first time, they had no idea what I did, but they loved it. And they're like trying to figure out what it was, but I, they, they had no idea I used gochujang, so they couldn't figure out what that like light spicy flavor was. I felt like a genius. So I was like, hey, 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 hey. guys, I've <laughs> really been wanting to play video games lately, just because it's like winter in Melbourne, so it's a little bit colder, and I've just had that video game vibe. But I want to live stream 
However, my internet here is so slow that I'm a little skeptical. So my salmon is all saucy and ready to go. So I'm just gonna put another layer of foil over top just to create kind of a steaming effect. Uh, you can, actually no, I lied. I don't wanna do that because I like when the, the sauce kind of gets crispy. So I'm just gonna put it in as is. Just make sure to fold up the sides real good so it has some sort of support. So I already have my oven set to like just about 200 degrees Celsius. Can't do that quick math in Fahrenheit, but adjust it to whatever, like 200 degrees Celsius, what is that in Fahrenheit? It's probably like what, 375? I'm just taking a rough guess. That will do 375 or 400. And I'm gonna put this in there for about 15 minutes and check on it and see if it's cooked. If not, we'll put it in for another five until it's to our liking. Okay, everyone, so my salmon is done cooking. I actually ended up leaving it in for about 20 minutes um, just to make sure it was fully cooked. Then on the side for like my vegetables, I just took about two very heavy handfuls of spinach and I sauteed them in a, about a tablespoon of olive oil in a pan. Then I threw in some crumbled up feta cheese just to add a little bit of fun flavor in changing it up. So let's go ahead and serve up this salmon. So I'm just gonna take one of these ones right here in the middle. Ooh. Oh man, it smells so amazing. Okay everyone, so like I said before, I definitely recommend you serve this with a side of rice. Unfortunately, my rice is still cooking, so I don't have it to show you guys, but trust me, it's cooking. It's just taking a while. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive in. Try that salmon. Ooh. Yeah, so depending on how cooked you like your salmon, 15 minutes will have it more on the rare side. And if you prefer your salmon more on the cooked side than 20 minutes is where you wanna aim for. So it's nice and steamy hot. Oh my God, I can't wait. It's been forever since I've had like gochujang. <laughs> oh my God. Mm. Oh, mm. so good. Oh, this is heaven. This is pure heaven, oh my God. I'm dead, I'm gonna eat all of this. Oh, so good. Okay, so the reason why I made this recipe is because Kyle actually requested it last night because I told him about it that I wanted to make it. And then we got this wine behind me. So he got this bottle of wine last night called Toll Puddle, Toll Puddle? Huh? And it's a Pinot Noir from Tasmania, Australia. So he got it last night, he actually won it in a contest. And it's like a hundred and $30 bottle of wine, something ridiculous like that. And we had a little taste last night to kind of see what it was like. And he thought this wine would be really good with like a baked salmon. So I'm gonna try it out now. And yes, I don't know how to properly pour a bottle of wine. So let's see. So I just had that salmon. Oh my God, he's so right. It's actually so good with this salmon. I am dead. I, I am dead. Let's have more whole thing is just gonna be me eating. Oh, mm-hmm. Oh my God. You guys, you have to try this. I know it might be hard for some of you to actually find a, a Asian grocery store that sells gochujang. Cause I know back in Canada, it used to be impossible to find it. But then finally, when I was there after Korea, I found one place that had it. Where was it? I had it. Remember, I think it was Oceans in Ontario. I had to go to one of the Oceans stores. Or was it some of the real Canadian superstores I think have them now too. Not 100% sure. Mm. And the spinach, oh my God. Yeah, so if you are like living in Australia, I think it's a little bit easier to find gochujang just because um, Australia has a little bit more of a larger Asian influence. If you're in Japan, you can actually order it on amazon.co.jp. They have it there, or you can actually go to Koreatown in um, Shinokubo. That's where I got mine last time. Spinach is so good too, but it would definitely be better if it was made with sesame oil. That's more Korean style. In Korea, they do like sauteed spinach all the time for a side dish, but it's made with um, sesame oil instead of olive oil. Really good. And the feta just adds this like burst of like flavor. You guys, it's so good. I feel like this should be a live stream and I could just talk to people like mukbang style. This salmon is actually magical. 
It's so magical. I don't even feel like I need rice. It's that good. Like I feel like rice would be the lamest thing on this plate right now. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this little bits with B segment. Thumbs up this video if you did. Try it. Definitely try it. You're gonna love it. Even if you don't like Korean food, you're gonna love it. It's not too spicy, not too sweet. Everything just complements each other so well. Definitely give it a shot. I feel like I'm going on about this way too much. So I'm gonna end the vlog here for tea. For today, you guys, I'm gonna eat all this salmon. Thumbs up this video if you want more little bits with B recipes. I wanna watch a movie. <laughs> okay, I need to stop. <laughs> Bye, guys.